and welcome back. Now, for our interview segment tonight, you got to meet our guest earlier on. He is John Major, an Air Force veteran. He talked to us about the planes flying low through Austin today. He also has more things on his mind, so he's going to join us again. Thanks for sticking around, John. Now, we talked a little bit about uh, the planes in the first segment, but let's go on to some other things. Uh, from what I understand, you have a very interesting story to tell about Osama bin Laden. Uh, yeah, well, I was, uh, I joined the military and eventually made my way into airborne intelligence and was deployed to Southcom several times and CENTCOM, uh, CENTCOM especially in Afghanistan theater. Mm -hmm. And while we were flying near the Hindu Kush area, we uh, had um, sensors on our aircraft that could pick up intel packages that had been set on the ground and most of them disguised somehow camouflaged into the environment so they weren't detected right and they'd put them in strategic locations like mountain passes uh, in which that's where this package was was in a mountain pass where it kind of funneled traffic through it so you could scan a lot of people going through and we had contractors working with us and we ran their package um, to retrieve this. So we, we actually just put it on board with us mm -hmm. and flew with it. And then when we got down, I was in the room and the contractor told us that that was positively identified by the Joint Chiefs staff that that had been collected with Osama bin Laden. Uh, that the package had been collected with Osama? The package, the package that we collected and brought back down after they processed it. Right. That it actually had Osama bin Laden voice and video of him. And that was about uh, October, November of 2007. Wow. I'd, heard, I'd heard rumors, you know, we call that in the military rumint, but <laughs> I'd heard from several colleagues in that that it had been, he'd been found earlier and that they were a little concerned why the military has never acted on it. And that was the case with our information after they announced that. I never heard it ever make the news and never ever saw the military act on that intel. Well, so, so you, you heard this back in, was this, two, 2007? Correct. Okay, so you're watching... That was you, Bush administration. Okay, so. Bush administration. So you experienced this back in 2007. Now, let's fast forward a few years. You know, the death of Osama bin Laden, they shot him in the face and threw him in the ocean. What was your reaction to that? Uh, that, that wouldn't have been the way they would have done it. They, they would have definitely had uh, other units involved after that. You know, had a SEAL team actually found it, there would have, they would have probably tried to get two or three other organizations in to verify and everything. It wouldn't have just been, oh yeah, our super well-trained SEALs, they're going to go and execute, bury, and everything. That, that so you're saying that they would have sent in some type of intelligence agency, maybe the CIA or another organization? Yeah, and it may even brought in a combined, combined in the military refers to multinational, you know, several different groups. One of our allies probably would have even come and weighed in with us, the, the Brits or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody closer to the location. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying it, it didn't, if, you know, if they did find them, let's just say there's a if, you know, they found them at that compound, you're saying it wouldn't have went down the way the official story says it did. Yeah, I mean, they might have had an operation like they did, you know, if it really went down that way. They would have had SEAL team maybe go in and do it, but afterwards there would have been a little bit of a mop-up that was proper, properly done instead of, you know, these guys go, oh, yeah, we don't want to make him into a martyr, so we're going to go and, you know, off the body, they they would have definitely backed it up, and but something's very fishy on that story. My my personal theory, uh, we know that Osama bin Laden had been a CIA operative in the past. That's right. very open source. Um, I believe he never stopped, and I believe that maybe they were retiring him as a possible, you know, the boogeyman. Him. Yeah, now the boogeyman can go and retire. Let's move on to some other topic. Wow. That's, so uh, that, that's my personal feelings on okay, it. Okay, yeah, I'm glad we, uh, glad we got that cleared up. Now, I don't want to spend all of our time on that. Now, you also uh, had a story as why you left the Air Force. Yeah, um, every time we flew a mission, it was uh, 
you know, we have checklists in, when we fly missions. Um, everything in the flying in the military is done by checklists. One of those checklists was to go through a briefing on who we collect on. And those are called the United States Security Intelligence Directives. Mm -hmm. um, you said 18 and you said 9 uh, specifically prohibit. Those, were all, those two directives were always reviewed before every flight. And they say that those usage go and direct the military that they are not allowed to go and collect on U.S. persons. You know, it's just redefining First Amendment, pretty much. That the, the people have the right to privacy. They have the right, you know. In the military, we have the, op the ability to collect on cell phone and all kinds of communications, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were told when we were on in the air, we were not ever to collect on a U.S. citizen. Even in, if we were in a combat theater in Afghanistan, we still briefed that because there was a chance you might come across an American citizen mm -hmm. while you're recording. And as soon as you found someone like that, you were supposed to report that you did it, you know, and you weren't allowed to collect on a corporation, on a U.S. citizen. And then uh, in our intel rooms where we'd go to work when we weren't deployed, I, I was listening, I think it was Military Channel, and there was, they were airing um, the general of the DIA, um, and he got up, I believe this was around 2009. Okay. And um, this general gets up, and they're asking him questions why the... Department of Defense is collecting intel on U.S. citizens without having the proper warrants. So this is back in, in 2009? Yeah. Could we just recently had the information come out. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people who are awake were not surprised by this, but the admissions by uh, Edward Snowden and some of these other guys saying that, hey, these guys have been watching you all along. Yeah. They, they openly stated it, and I, I've heard it times since, since I left even, but this general, when he got up, um, he got up and he said, well, um, to answer that question, excuse me, um, when he answered the question, he goes and he, he says, I, I was positive that he was going to deny it and say, oh, well, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd had suspicions that rogue units, I was hoping it was rogue and not just commonplace units were collecting on U.S. citizens. I'd, I'd heard rumor of people from different military units other than mine. I know we were really religious enough about not collecting on US, US, US citizens. But I'd heard rumor guys would get on there and they'd go and collect to see who could find, you know, the reestiest phone call or something like that. So, so you're saying it wasn't even so much for uh, security reasons, they're just probing in people's information? Yeah, and I actually knew operators that actually admitted to doing that. and. Wow. Uh, I usually followed it up with the chew out, and I've I've reported many situations, and I've never ever had anyone ever respond to any of my complaints. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the thing in my unit, though. Like I said, we were seemed like everybody was on the up and up. But then this general, he gets in there, and instead of denying it, he just openly says, "Oh yeah, I do that under executive order." Wow. And and so it was happening under Bush. Um, I knew, um, you know, it must have been 2008, because I remember that happened under Bush, and I remember that Bin, uh, bin Laden, uh, <laughs> Osama, <laughs> Obama, excuse me, Obama was coming <laughs> to office, okay. and, and I didn't have high hopes for the military at that point, just because of statements he'd made of what he was going to do with the military. Mm -hmm. uh, the civilian military really concerned me. And so I, I just, you know, within a year or so, I, I didn't re-up my contract and I left. And, and so that's kind of the way I ended my military career when they openly admitted that they don't respect, you know, they no longer consider themselves public servants, but now they're the bosses in charge of everybody. So and that's how they act about it. That's exactly, exactly right. Now we're going to move on to some other topics, but just briefly, uh, you said you weren't too satisfied, you weren't too, uh, uh, confident of the job President Obama was going to do directing our military. How do you feel about Guantanamo Bay still being active today? Well, it's been well established that they have several sites like that in the military. 
they don't declare where all of them are at. Um, you know, I was actually, I was at a joint operations center in Afghanistan right next to a prison similar to that. And, you know, they, that's another topic there. They use a lot of civilians a lot of times in the military because to do a lot of their travesties they do nowadays with the torture and that. And they don't use the military a lot of times, or if they do, they use the low privates and that to, and then say it was an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. But they use the, the civilian contractors a lot because they don't fall under the UCMJ. And so under the UCMJ, you know, we're punished very severely. You know, we're, we're pretty much following under military rule no matter where we go in the world. But a contractor doesn't follow under that same standard. And so with him, he, he pretty much gets fired if he's ca caught doing anything wrong. And then they'll just send him back home and, you know, he can get Bring in the next job. guy. Exactly. And he can just go get another job with another contracting firm. And, you know, it's a revolving door and they like it that way. All right. Now, uh, our viewers are watching and they see all these things on our table right here. We have many seeds on here. So I want to shift gears to that. Okay, so we have these things on our table right here, John, and many of our viewers are probably wondering, what are these, all these seeds doing on here, and why are you talking about this with an Air Force guy, you know, a guy with such intelligence? So can you tell us uh, your involvement with the Seed Center at InfoWars? Uh, yeah, I've been in the agricultural community. I'm an old farm boy from the Intermountain West. Okay. Um, and uh, right now I'm in, in Idaho, and uh, we've been involved with agricultural production my whole life but I felt like it was really important now that we see these things come into a head in the government and we actually see open tyranny mm -hmm. it's it's time for people to start preparing and and I feel like it's good to have food storage it's good to have fuel that's a good start but you need to also have a way that you can perpetuate the next generation and by being able to produce your own food um, do sprouting that kind of thing that, you know, you can get sprouts growing within just a few days of starting the process. And so I, I felt like that was a crucial point. I'm really big into prepping and I think ammunition and everything. Uh, I think we need to all start trying to do the best we can. The more prepared every individual is in the country, the less we're going to be impacted when they start trying to control our resources. And we know that's coming down, the electrical grids, you know, the smart meters and all that. Mm -hmm. They're going to start controlling resources. And so it's going to, you know, they're going to be able to raise prices on the populace. I really think they're going to try and do away with the middle class and just have us kind of peasants underneath their global elite, you know. Right. Um, we see Monsanto and all those guys adulterating everything. And I, like I say, I've been in agriculture since I was a young boy. And... Now they're, you know, everybody's doing Monsanto, everything. Right. It's just the way the conventional farmer thinks. They think I'm some retarded hippie for trying to <laughs> do it the natural way. Oh, uh, uh, lo and behold, you do it the way it's been done since the beginning of time. Yeah. And, you know, I even try and, uh, I'm developing my own wallapini, which is an underground greenhouse so that I, I'll be able to produce year round. Um, you can use less water in some of those. So I'm always trying to find a way that I can be completely off the grid. I've been put on a smart grid. You know, that's a hot topic for me yeah, now because they forced that on me. So I'm going to, by the end of the year, I, I'm planning to be completely off the grid. Uh, that's that's very good. Uh, we have to get close to the end of our show right here. So it's going to yeah. finish up a few more topics. Now, you said you're a prepper. You know, that term has many negative connotations. Yeah. Uh, do you think, wh where do you think this comes from? Is it from shows like Doomsday Preppers? Or where do people get this notion that, you know, these preppers are these crazy people with stockpiles of ammunition and food and whatever else, and it's just some real negative thing? Well, anyone that believes in the Bible, which a good majority of people should, you know, you read through Revelations and Isaiah, you should probably be a prepper because yeah, I don't think God told us those things just to, you know, by the way, it's going to be really rough for you going through that time, period of time. Mm -hmm. I, I believe he's trying to tell you, you know, follow my counsel, try and, try and be self-sufficient. Uh, That's a good word, self-sufficient. Yeah. Self-sufficient. Yeah. 
I don't think uh, I've heard people tell me, "Oh, all I all I stockpile are guns," because I'll just go take it from you. You other people that are prepared. <laughs> well, you got some got a few guns of your own, don't you? I have a lot of guns. Yeah, yeah. But I I really don't enjoy killing. Right. I try and be a good marksman. I I want to be more of a humanitarian, and I think the more prepared the people are, the less we're going to need the guns. But I do think we should be prepared for as many scenarios as we can. And, you know, I have a lot of friends kind of jeer at me for mm -hmm. being as prepared as I try to be, but... They'll know. become knocking on your door when, uh, when something actually happens. So with the time we have left, what advice would you give to somebody who's interested in prepping or just being self-sufficient? Well, I think, you know, you need to get your... We have a lot of skills that are lost that, you know, the, the older generations we're way more self-sufficient, you know, and I think we need to start developing some of those. Keep, I'm okay with technology, but we need to also know how to do a garden, know how to do some of these things, because there may come a time when what you can produce is all you're going to have. Exactly. And so I think becoming well-versed in a, in a lot of myriad of different skills is going to help everybody. It'll help us be more resilient in an economy also. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're just out of time, but definitely appreciate you and not just for the seeds and all the things you do, but also for your military intelligence. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. And there he goes. A very timely guest, not just telling us about the military planes, but also about our seeds. And you need to check out the InfoWars Seed Center at the InfoWars shop. You can see it right there on your screen. Just like John said, you know, you want to be prepared. You don't want to have to go to the FEMA camp, or you don't want to show up and do whatever thing that they want you to do just to get your, get your rations. So he says, grow your food yourself. It's good. It's healthy. It's, uh, it's heirloom seeds. It's not all this Monsanto stuff. So it's good stuff right there at the InfoWars shop. And also check out PrisonPlanet.tv, the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, the special reports, and so much more. Get your 15-day free trial right there at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, that's the end of this episode, but don't fret. The InfoWars Nightly News is not going anywhere for the next two days. We do have two uh, very special reports. Tomorrow, July 4th, you'll get to see David Knight talk to Miss Charlotte Isby. You know, she's a, you know expert on education in this country, so stay tuned for that tomorrow, July 4th. And also on July 5th, we will have uh, a sneak preview, I guess you could call it, of Obama Deception 2. We'll give you some uh, sneak peeks at interviews with Richard Mack, Joel Scales, and, uh, and also Chuck Baldwin, Pastor Chuck Baldwin. So stay tuned for that. Both new content. Uh, Thursday and Friday right here on InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. So I'm Jakari Jackson, and I'll see you next week. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland 
and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.